Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be looking at certain more tools which, which would be required in order to study the spectral properties of the self-adjoint and bounded linear operators. So first of all, in this video, we'll be looking at projection operators. Until now, we have studied about positive operators, square root of positive operators, monotone sequences and many more things. So here we'll be looking at this projection operator. So before answering this question that uh, what is this projection operator, let's first of all understand why we are at all studying them. So here, because you know projection operators, they are relatively simple when you compare them to the operators which define the complex phenomena which appear physically. So that means instead of studying the operator itself, what you do, you study the projection operator and it makes life simple, right? So that is why we are studying them. And moreover, they the, these projection operators or the projections, they are exactly related to the spectrum of the given operator. So that means Whenever you have the spectral representations of the given self-adjoint and bounded operators, that would involve projections itself. And moreover, we call these one parameter families of these projections as the spectral families for the given operator T, right? So because uh, they make life simple, so let's see and learn what are these projection operators. So we can define a projection operator. So uh, if you remember, you have already studied this thing, but uh, for completeness, let's uh, again review what are these projection operators. So these projection operators, which are defined on a Hilbert space, they are defined in such a manner that they are written as the direct sum of two elements. One is taken from the closed subspace Y, and another one is taken from its orthogonal complement. So that means when uh, you could write whole of the given Hilbert space as the direct sum of two spaces, one is this closed subspace of H and another one is its complement, right? So that means if you take some arbitrary element X from H, that could be written as Y plus Z, where Y is a member of this capital Y closed subspace and Z is a member of this orthogonal subspace of Y, right? So and moreover, you know that the direct product is unique. So that means the projection you have is also unique. So what is projection? It is basically a mapping. And this mapping, what it does, it maps and it takes elements from H. So that means it is taking X here from H. It could take any element. X is the arbitrary element. And it is mapping that H to Y because it is a unique mapping. So this is a linear map here. Right, so we have, uh, we can define the projection operator P as a linear operator defined from the Hilbert space to the Hilbert space. Obviously, here the range is Y and Y is what? Y is present in the closed subspace of the given Hilbert space H, right? So obviously, it is a subspace of H. So this Y is a member of H only and we have defined this to be X it maps x to y where what is y y could be written as p of x so this is called the projection of the hilbert space h onto the its subspace y right and moreover we call the operator p as a projection operator whenever the corresponding y that is the closed subspace and it is the range for the given operator p moreover this y complement that is the null space for the operator p right and third thing is that when the operator p is restricted on to y that would act as an identity operator so that means it will give all the elements of y back right so these are few of the properties for the projection operators and so if you identify these properties you could say that the given operator p that is the projection operator and moreover the direct product x is equal to y plus z could also be written that as because we are writing y as p of x. So you could write y as p of x. So what would be z? So we are saying this z is nothing but i minus p of x. Why? Because when you add them, when you add them, so what do you have p of x 
plus i of x minus p of x so this p of x and this p of x nullify each other's effect and you are left with i of x and what is i of x that is nothing but x only so this satisfies the left hand side here so you have p of x plus i minus p of x so that means you are calling this p of x as y and you are calling i minus p of x as y complement so and moreover both of them they are orthogonal to each other so here y complement is i minus p and that is the uh, and here the projection of h is onto y complement and sometimes they also take the uh, uh, this as another definition for the projection operator how so if you have a bounded linear operator which is defined from some given hilbert space to some given hilbert space then that would be called a projection whenever you that is self adjoint so that means whenever you have p is equal to p cross and whenever it is idempotent that means p square is equal to p and if uh, both of them happen simultaneously for some given linear operator which is also bounded then that particular operator is a projection operator so this is the result also and this is the definition also that we use sometimes so here let's try and prove this thing first so here in the first part we assume that p is the given projection operator and we will prove that p is a self adjoint and idempotent operator so well that's very easy to prove we first of all assume that p of h is nothing but y so here we wanted to prove firstly that p is idempotent that is we wanted to prove p square is equal to p for that if we define px as equal to y and y is a member of capital y space then what would be p square x you could write p square x as p times of p of x what is p of x that is y so you could write this as p of y right and what is p of y now if you remember p when restricted over y that gives you y back right so whenever you apply p on to y and the small y is some member of this capital y then it would act as identity so it will give back y only so p of y is y only and what was y it was p of x so you have from here this p square x as equal to p of x so that means this operator p is idempotent so one part is done next here for uh, in order to prove in order that it is a projection we again wanted to prove that it is self adjoint for that we are firstly defining two elements x1 and x2 both of these they are we are taking from the given hilbert space h so both of them could be written as the direct sum of two other elements y1 and z1 y2 and z2 with where y1 and y2 they are taken from the space y and z1 and z2 are taken from the complementary space y right so then we could say that because they are taken from two spaces which are orthogonal to each other so whenever we take the inner product of both of them that is going to be zero right if you take y1 with z1 or y1 with z2 both of them are going to be zero because they are both the subspaces they are orthogonal to each other right now we wanted to prove the self adjointness for the given operator p here for that what we are we, what we try to prove we try to prove that the inner product of p x1 with x2 that is equal to the inner product of x1 with p x2 right so that means we are shift we have shifted this operator to this side over here so uh, we start from this thing that the inner product of p x1 with x2 that is equal to the inner product of now you could write p x1 as equal to y1 and x2 we are we have defined this to be y2 plus z2 so we we could write x2 as y2 plus z2 here so you could open up this inner product here so that would be the inner product of y1 with y2 plus the inner product of y1 with z2 and you know the inner product of y1 with z2 that is nothing but equal to 0 so therefore you you can write here 0 and moreover what is the 0 0 is this the inner product of uh, z1 with uh, z1 with y2 right so you, instead of the 0 you could write this thing now you could club up the inner products using the properties of inner products here so that would give you the inner product of y1 with z1 
the inner product of y1 plus z1 with y2 what is this y1 plus z1 that is x1 and what is this y2 that is p of x2 so this is what we wanted to prove here so this proves that the operator p that is self adjoint operator so we in this case we have assumed that p was the given projection operator and we have proved that p is both idempotent as well as self adjoint so conversely we wanted to prove that p is the given projection operator so we assume that it is self adjoint and it is idempotent right so in order to prove that it is projection we will prove that the given hilbert space h could be written as the direct sum of two spaces one is y one is y complement where what is this y that is the closed subspace y uh, complement that is the null space and whenever p is restricted onto y that would act as the identity operator so the basic properties for the projection operators now if you take x you could write that to be identity of x no issue so that you could add p of x and you could subtract p of x and you could club up these terms so you finally you have p of x as one term i minus p of x as second term so that means because we have taken this x from the space h right or basically we are calling this to be y right so it is equal to the space y could be written as p of h the uh, and and the direct sum of i minus p times of h right and both these subspaces p of h and i minus p of h both of them they are orthogonal to each other how you could check this thing here if you take some element from this first space p of h let's call that to be p of x and if you take the second element as i minus p of x so we are taking this to be i minus p of v so here in the first case we are saying x is some arbitrary element of h in the second case we are saying v is some arbitrary element of h right so we take this inner product now because p is idem self adjoint we could shift this to this side so you have x and p i minus p v you could open up the brackets now because p is idempotent so you could write this p square as equal to p so p v minus p v is zero inner product with zero is zero so that means you have this inner product as equal to zero so that means both of these elements the spaces from which both of these elements occur they are orthogonal to each other so that means it it is proved that the orthogonality of p with that of i minus p is justified right next we wanted to prove the result about the null space for this projection operator so we will prove here that the null space for a bounded linear operator that is closed here right so here we say that y is closed because y is the null space of the operator i minus p now how this thing is true let's see how we can say y is the null space of i minus p so we wanted to prove here in this case that y is equal to the null space of i minus p so let's prove it in two ways first of all we will prove that y is contained in this null space and nextly uh, uh, secondly we will be proving that y contains this null space right so in order to prove this thing let's take some element from y the elements of y because y is nothing but p of h that so its element would be of this form p of x kind right so we take some element p of x and then in order that uh, we want in order to prove that this p of x would belong to the null space of i minus p what we wanted uh, what we are required to prove we are required to prove that this operator i minus p when applied on to this element p of x gives you zero if that is so the element p of x would be present in the null space for this operator i minus p so let's consider this element open up the brackets now because it is idempotent so p square is p px minus px is 0 so you have this result so we are done with this part nextly we wanted to prove that y contains the null space of i minus p 
So in this case, we take some element here and we prove that the same element belongs to this space as well. So here we take some element x from the null space of i minus p. If x is present here, so that means when you apply i minus p onto this element, that will give you 0. So you could open this up. You have ix minus px is equal to 0. So you could write this to be ix is equal to px. What is ix? Identity operator applied onto the same element is the same element, right? So px is equal to p of x. So that means x is written as some element uh, p of some element of h, right? Because x basically was a member of h, right? So that means it is of this form p of h. So we could say x is a member of y here. So that means y contains the null space of i minus p. And lastly, when we apply the op projection operator p onto y, so we wanted to prove that this would act as identity operator when uh, it is applied onto the elements of y. So let's take some element y from the space y. So we are taking the element small y from the space y and it is of this form p of h. So that means this y could be written as p of x kind, right? So what would be this? So it would be p of y that would be equal to p. And what is this y? It is p of x. So it is p of x here. So you have p square x here. Now because it is idempotent, it is px. And what is px? That is py. So you have py is equal to py here. So that means it is acting as an identity operator whenever you apply it onto the elements of y. So that means because we have proved all the properties here for the projection operator. So we could say that the given operator p that is a projection operator. So I hope you understood this theorem and result well. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching.